Hello everybody, how are you? David DeFranco here from TechSocial.com as well as DavidDeFranco.co slash contact. That is where you can email me your questions, comments, feedback, all that good stuff, and even tech surveys. Yes, if you like a little segue there. Today's tech survey is brought to you by Karen Smith. So thank you very much to Karen for emailing this to me. It is a pretty lengthy survey, I'm not gonna lie. 30 questions is a lot to do in one video. So, to make this video short enough for people to enjoy, I'm gonna split it up into 15 questions in this video, and then I'll do the remaining 15 questions in a future video, a couple days from now, a week from now, a month from now, whenever I get around to it. But anyway, thank you very much to Karen for emailing this uh, my way, and I will put your social media links right below to YouTube, Twitter, all that good stuff. So, let's get on with it. Question number one. When did you first start to take an interest in technology? Excellent question. Honestly, it's hard to tell, but the earliest days of technology I can remember, maybe I was only a few years old, I was playing with the Atari 2600, my parents still have theirs, and I was just so fascinated by it, and I loved my NES console. I was a big fan of NES, especially Batman, and um, I'm pretty sure I played, what was it, DuckTales? DuckTales on the NES? Man, DuckTales. That was the stuff, guys. DuckTales was awesome. And of course, all the other NES classics I've always loved, but for whatever reason, those games just stuck out of my head. So there you go. Question number two, do you want to kill that clock? Hell yes. Be right back. Now, the real question number two is, what and or who inspired you to start your YouTube channel? Honestly, I've always been into video, so I've kind of always had it in me. I've always enjoyed capturing awesome moments on camera, whether they're serious moments, such as... Christmas. Christmas is more comical in our house. We like to have fun and whatever. But you know what I mean. I just like I just I just love capturing moments on camera. That's basically the point. But Apple is really what got me into YouTube. Just the whole iMovie thing and I was fascinated by how easy it was to edit and upload. I was, I was just like I've always wanted a place to upload videos to the internet. And when I found that out on YouTube, man, my life changed. Seriously, my life honestly did change big time. And I also have my good friend Alfred to thank. He is actually what got me into putting my family videos on YouTube. I never thought people would be interested in watching my family traditions and stuff. I was I was always, as I move the tripod, I was always interested in putting, not skits, but music videos-ish or videos of the pets, but not like family traditions like Christmas. So thank you, Alfred. He, he's actually the one who inspired me to do that. All right, we got to speed up here. Question number three, why iPhone other over other manufacturers? Honestly, because it's Apple. I never really cared about phones that much. I mean, I've always liked my past phones, my flip phones or whatever, but they were just phones. I mean, I, I, didn't, I didn't have a personal connection um, getting email. Uh, but when Apple came out with the iPhone, that changed everything. And I already loved Apple at the time. I honestly wasn't that interested in the iPhone, to be honest. It just was like, why do I need an iPhone? But... When I saw it in action, I was like, hot damn, I need this thing, so the rest is history. Question number four, why did you pick the Maru Aranga 2 over other case manufacturers? I'm actually using that right now. Uh, honestly, because, I say honestly a lot, don't I? Because I like Cyber Acoustics, and as far as I know, Maru is a division of Cyber Acoustics, and what's better than the black case I used to use? Well, the same design, but with an awesome design. I mean, a same design case, but with a different pattern. Smoke a dope. Want to be on camera? Oh wow, he's hyper. He's booking. So that's basically why. Question number five. What is your favorite iPhone case and why? I don't have a favorite. I'm very bad with iPhone cases. I go from a case to case like maybe w once every month or so. I'm not obsessed with cases like other people, but I do appreciate a good iPhone case. For instance, right now for my good friend David Bather, he actually gave me a black bumper last time he visited here in Jersey. And I, I've been using it ever since. I love the simplicity of it. I love how it feels. It's slim. And most of all, I love seeing the back. Like I've always said, the back of the iPhone 4 slash 4S, honestly, I think it looks better than the front. And that's saying a lot because the front doesn't look bad either. But the back, there's just something about it. It's just the flat, the glass, and the nice Apple logo. It's just, maybe I'm alone in thinking that, but the back of the iPhone is beautiful. And I guess the point of this is, I just like exposing it. I'm getting email. By the way, do you like my wallpaper? Oh yeah. Wow, what for the win. So there you go. Question number six. Has there ever been a time when you felt embarrassed whilst vlogging in public? 
whilst. Um, yes, and I still do, honestly. There I go, saying honestly again. Vlogging in public is one of those things where you're like, alright, once I get the first minute or so done, the rest is easy. For instance, in Seaside House this year, when I go in July, Smokey, do you really have to jingle in every freaking video I do? Love you, though. Stay cool. It's just one of those things where I get nervous at first, but then I'm like, you know what? It's really not a big deal. Never, see, never ever going to see these people again. And that's my whole attitude. It's like, why worry about that now moment when it's not going to matter later? So that's a little inspiration for you guys if you're, well, nervous vlogging in public. It's really not that bad at all. Just picture the person, I mean, the camera being a person. That's essentially what it is. I mean, it's really not a huge deal. A lot, of, a lot more people are making videos in public nowadays with their iPhones and everything. So... Go for it, don't be nervous, and well, just have fun. Question number seven. Do you think there will be a time in life where we will no longer need an optical drive? When do you think this will be? Oh, hell yeah. And that is starting right now. The average person, and mark my words, the average person does not need an optical drive. I do because I do a lot of clientele work. Well, not a lot of clientele work with physical media, but there are projects now and then, like every month or so, or every, every couple months, where I have to burn DVDs and send them over to Florida or whatever. That's just what I do. But for the average person, you definitely do not need, need an optical drive, and if Apple ever officially kills the optical drive in the iMac and the Mac Pro, honestly, there, there I go again. It's not a big deal, guys. It really isn't a big deal. And if you do need an optical drive, just, just buy an external one. There you go. Problem solved. Question number eight. What is your favorite film and why? I don't have a favorite. I like too many. So, I like Pixar films. I love Titanic. Titanic is one of those movies where... Even like this many years later, I still love it just as much as I saw it the first time. It's just an excellent movie overall. And the music, the music is a die for. I freaking love that soundtrack. So I guess the answer to that is a lot of movies. The Human Centipede, I freaking love The Human Centipede. I love being grossed out. That's a little fact about me. I don't mind being grossed out in movies because I know it's not real. It's just makeup and gush and whatever. So I love Human Centipede, especially the full sequence. You know, you know the sequel, Human Centipede Part 2. It wasn't an excellent movie, but I liked it for the gross factor. So I guess that's the answer to that. I don't really have a favorite. I like too many to count. Question number nine. Do you think the Apple Thunderbolt display is overpriced? Uh, I want to say overpriced because if you put a monitor with that resolution next to other monitors, it's really not overpriced. I just got to say they should implement more features into the Thunderbolt display. Now, me, I, I wouldn't mind paying the premium uh, because I like Apple's hardware. I like everything matching. I like everything just working the way it should. And I realize it's just a monitor. But to speak from the truth and whatever in my past experiences with monitors, I don't see myself buying an Apple display anytime soon because I love Dell's displays. I love Samsung's displays. I even like Asus, Asus's displays. It's just... I'm not picky when it comes to display manufacturers. As long as they have good reviews and as long as they look good on my desk, then I'll buy it. And with that said, I am actually thinking about getting a Dell 27-inch monitor with an insane resolution. Don't even tell me 1920 by 1080 because honestly, it looks like crap. 1920 by 1080 at that size. Do you want my advice? If you're getting a monitor for your computer, don't go above 24-inch if you're going with 1920 by 1080 because trust me, it'll look like poop. Little lens cleanage there. This is the most unorganized tech survey in the world, but that's okay. Number 10. How are the Beats by Dre performing for you? Are they the best headphones you have ever owned? I am not an audiophile, so I cannot contest to how truly awesome the sound quality is from a professional point of view. But me personally, I like them. I'm not a big fan of Monster. I've said that in the past, and I'm still saying that to this day. I'm not going to lie. I mean, I don't like Monster that much. They are a little overpriced in terms of their product, especially cables. Can't stand their overpriced cables. However, with that said, I do enjoy my Beats very much. They're stylish, audio sounds great, and bass is good enough. So that's my personal opinion. I know there's Beats haters out there, and that's fine. Keep, keep your comments to yourself. I'm not, I'm not looking for a Beats war. Uh, but I will say, I enjoy the Beats brand. I'm not a big Monster brand person, but the Beats brand, I do enjoy. Question number 11, if you could purchase any smartphone apart from the iPhone, what would it be? Basically, any Windows phone, because I'm actually a big fan of Windows phone, and I'm actually a big fan of Windows 8, the whole Metro UI. I just think it's awesome, and I think it's fresh and something different and simple in the eyes, which I really appreciate. 
Question number 12, what do you like best about the iPod Touch? Probably the thin form factor. I don't use my iPod Touch that much, and I hate to say that because I love my iPhone over that, the iPod Touch, big time. The iPod Touch is nice, just there's something about the Reddit display on that thing. It doesn't look nearly as good as the iPhone 4 or 4S. And yes, from what I can tell, the displays are different enough to notice. The iPod Touch has like a washed out look. So I guess my answer to this is the insanely thin form factor. Question number 13. Do you have a favorite YouTuber? No. Question number 14. When the Magic Trackpad was first announced, did you think it would be a hit product? Speaking from an honest point of view, no. The Magic Trackpad is one of the few products from Apple that I didn't support from the beginning. I was like, why the hell are they doing this? Why the hell do people need a giant trackpad when they could use a perfectly good mouse with better precision? But when I saw the features and the point, I mean, the, uh, the, uh, all the point gestures you can do and the pinching and zooming, and I saw how many people are actually using it, I was like, okay, this is a pretty sweet product. And plus I got one sponsored, so that definitely helped because I, I don't think I ever would have purchased one myself, but I'm very grateful to have one per uh, you know, sponsored in the past, and I do have videos on it. I uh, just searched my channel for Magic Trackpad. So the fact that I had that awesome opportunity to actually use it for myself, it has definitely changed my views on the Magic Trackpad overall, and well, I love it now. I don't use it every day, but I do love it. And question number 15, which is the last one, I'm sorry I talk so much, but hey, this is exactly why I cut this video in half. In your opinion, what makes the Canon PowerShot L300HS stand out amongst other digital cameras? Excellent question, Kara Smith. I'm gonna close that right here, close up the video with this question. Elf 300 HS, in my opinion, the price tag is awesome. You can get it for about $200 if you look in the right places. The features it has are incredible. The battery life is pretty decent, awesome form factor, and overall it's just an awesome product for the price. I mean, from what I've seen, you really cannot get better for the price, and I'm not a Canon fanboy, I'm not an icon hater, but I've always been a Canon person. Like I said, I'm not a fanboy. I don't know enough about cameras to call myself a fanboy, but I definitely prefer the Canon brand over Nikon, and I realize people are going to get upset with that, and that's fine. Uh, people love their different brands like me. I love Apple. Other people love Android. Well, I should say Google. That's the real brand. I guess what I'm trying to say here is I love the camera overall. It's the best point and shoot I've ever purchased, not counting DSLRs, in which... Yes, I am very interested in the Canon T4i. And there you go, I said that. Yes, I am very interested in the T4i if it's ever announced. It could be announced by this weekend. Uh, so I'm very excited about that. So, But that's in a whole other video. But yes, the ELF 300HS is a great camera. Just go to my channel, search ELF 300HS, and you will see tons of videos I have on it. Well, I don't know about tons of videos, but enough to keep you interested. And speaking of interested, if you found this video interesting, please give it a thumbs up right down there. Somewhere down there, just click that like button. And if you're a newbie, I do encourage you to subscribe to my channel because I try to upload at least three or four videos a week, ranging amongst tons of topics, ranging from tech, family traditions, first tastes. A lot of people do like my first taste. I'm not quite sure why, but hey, they do. So anyway, thank you again to Karen Smith for submitting the survey. I really enjoyed it. I apologize for talking so much, but they actually, they were great questions, so that's why my answers were so in-depth, I guess you could say. And of course, if you guys want to submit your own surveys, just head on over to ddefranco.com slash contact. That is where you can submit your surveys, questions, comments, feedback, hate, all that good stuff. Now I am finally done. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have an awesome weekend, provided you watch this today, Friday, April. What's the today's date? Friday the 13th. That's right. Good luck. Stay safe. Check out my social media links below, and I'll see you guys next time.